Hey everybody, good afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you're at. Thank you for joining me here. I hope you guys are doing well. We are going to try to knock out uh, some of the level 25 and 26 stuff here in Duskwood today because we don't have a lot of other places to go. And we're going to have to start tackling some quests. Nurse Strong, good morning. Thank you for being here. Well, good afternoon, where I'm at now. I didn't quite make it in the morning. Ah, uh, Nurse Strong Diablo is okay. Yeah. The game is not sucking me in. There's lots of really good things about the game that I can see, like, objectively are very good. Like, the art is good, the animations are good, combat feels uh, very... Not really addictive to me, but it's kind of cathartic. Like, I can see how someone would like pressing those buttons for long periods of time. The story is not really sucking me in. The story has been a little bit weird. Parts of it are, have been a little off-putting and strange. Uh, the side quests are, are abysmally boring. And the dungeons are all pretty samey. And I don't think any of them are ever going to stick out in my mind, even if I run them all a hundred times. So yeah, that's just my experience. People seem to like it a lot who are like really big Diablo players. Uh, which I never really have been, so... It, it kind of makes sense that not all parts of it are really jiving with me. I kind of expected, like, more linearity in the A-plot, but the way they have the main objectives split up, you can kind of go do whatever you want with, like, three different storylines, and that makes the main story feel very disjointed and not linear. And I wasn't really digging that last night. Akale 016, Alex, welcome to the stream, good morning guys. Let's go try to do this Worgen quest, this is probably one of the hardest ones that we have right now for the Shadow Weavers, and we should just kind of see how we do. And if we're not feeling good about it, we can go somewhere else. Well, that was a good start. First thing we do is body pull a Dark Runner. Now, a Dark Runner is probably going to run away. Which tells me that maybe we need to think about using that seal that stops people from running away. But I don't have it on my bar right now. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Justice. Oh, it is on our bar. It's, uh, it's F4. Okay, perfect. Jason, Daryl, Kiopi, welcome to the stream. Thank you guys for being here. Hope you're doing well. These are all Dark Runners. I, I don't need these guys. Here we go. Here's a Shadow Weaver. Level 27. Still pretty high level. Now, I guess I should assume these guys are also going to try to run away, so let, let's hit them with uh, our Seal of Justice here. Mike T, hello. Thank you for being here, man. Well, that was a little too close. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These guys with their shadow magic, they might be as bad as like somebody with a fireball. Carrie, good morning. Thanks for being here, coming to hang out. Oh, this guy decided after about 30 seconds that he did want to aggro us after all. It took him some time to decide, but he is level 29, so... We're gonna need to heal here at some point. Adrian, thank you for being here, man. Thank you for being around the channel for so long. Thanks for being in the streams. I appreciate it. Miles, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are starting today off with a little bit of sketchiness. I, I probably shouldn't be fighting these guys. I, I kind of wanted to see if this is something we could work on right now, but... Unless we can fight them one-on-one -on -one just really far away from the rest of them, 
it's probably not looking good, and the only ones on the outskirts are mainly the Dark Runners that we don't need right now. And uh, they're level 28, 29, so this area, Tweety Bird, this area is definitely risky. Mogar man, hello, good morning, good afternoon. William wants to know where we got the sword. Honestly, I, I don't remember. It was, it was a quest, wasn't it, guys? We got it from a quest, but... I can't remember at this point where we would have been. Uh, maybe somewhere in the wetlands. Maybe somewhere in Ashenvale. Those are the two places we've quested recently. It's a pretty uh, awesome sword. It's, it's absolutely enormous. It's like buster sword size sword. Whitney, good morning. Oh, Shia, you're right. It was a vendor sword. We found it on a vendor. It was like one gold and 64 silver, so it was pretty expensive, but we have a lot of gold. And yeah, it was a vendor sword. Mm -hmm. I remember now. See, that's what's great about streaming is that there's stuff that I would never remember, but you guys can uh, keep me refreshed. <laughs> because my memory is not great, as you guys probably already know. Paul, good morning, man. Good afternoon. Let's get out of this area. Let's let's go down the road. We'll check out the cemetery. I, I think some of the guys in the southeastern quadrant here should be okay for us to fight. And we should be able to push a couple of different quests forward by uh, being over in that area. Dan, hello, man. Good morning and afternoon. Yeah, the new weapon we got off of a vendor at some point yesterday. Oh, that is Stitches. We need to mark you. There we go. Let's get off the road. It's good to run into Stitches like right away so we know exactly where he's at. And we don't have to ponder like the rest of our journey. He, he's kind of hanging out there. That's fine. He shouldn't be able to aggro us over here. Let's hang out way over here for a minute and fight some of these uh, green wolves. Patrick, how you doing? I'm well. You want to know if I if I go to the gym? Uh, I weight lift, but I do that at home these days. I have times in my life when I go to the gym a lot, and then I have times where I stay at home and work out. And uh, recently, I've just been at home. But yeah, I've been I've been working out for 18 years weightlifting since I was 21. And I do it like four or five times a week. Now I'm down to like half hour workouts. It's just about maintaining now. I'm not I'm not trying to bulk up anymore. I'm too old. Patrick, how come I changed to home workouts? Uh, I don't like being surrounded by tons of people typically. I have a little bit of anxiety about being at places that are crowded. And uh, my gym is kind of crowded seasonally because like kids get off from college and stuff. And it's like, if I wanted to go to the gym, this would not be the time of year to do it because there'd be high schoolers and college kids crawling all over everything. And uh, yeah, I don't, like I, don't, I don't like working out on display in front of so many people. Also, like for some reason, when people see me working out, they think that they want to come ask me questions about working out and... I'm just there to work out when I'm there, and like, so I'm polite, I'm a really polite person, so I will engage people and spend time engaging them when, when what I really want to do is finish my workout. And at home I can work out in peace. Yeah, it's a little bit quicker for me to work out at home, so. I, ha I have better fans at home so I can keep cooler while I'm working out. <laughs> at the gym I just like sweat profusely and it's absolutely disgusting. Lots of reasons. But eventually, you know, I'll have times when I go to the gym and I'll, I'll, I'll lift heavy for a little bit and then I'll just go back to home workouts. When you do it for so long, you just, you just change the things that you do occasionally. Otherwise, you just get totally sick of it. Right, Jason, not polite, spineless, right. 
when you don't when you don't want to tell someone to screw off, it's because you're spineless, not because you're polite. Absolutely. Alexander wants to know where my hair went. Well, the funny thing is, it went to my face. Like I used to have hair, and I I didn't have a beard, and then one day, it like started to migrate. It was the strangest thing. And, and now most of it grows on my face, and it doesn't grow as much on my head. Like, I could grow hair on my head, it just wouldn't be very impressive. Also, I'm a pretty active person, so I do end up sweating often throughout the day, and I, I hate having hair when, uh, when you're gonna sweat a lot. It just makes me feel disgusting. So it's easier for me to not have hair than to try to, like, take care of it properly, you know? Dan, I have a bench in, uh, in barbells. Dumbbells, sorry. I have dumbbells, and that's it right now. Yep. Just a good old fashioned set of dumbbells and a bench. It's all you need really to maintain. Louie, hello. Thanks for being here. How are the doggies? They're good. They've been being good. It's, it's my, my son who's been sick the last couple of days with a high fever. And we took him to the doctor. His mom took him to the doctor. I didn't, I didn't put in any effort. Uh, and she took him to the doctor and they're just like, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. There's nothing else to do. Just keep treating the fever. So we're going to keep doing that. Dawson wants to know, what are the best professions for a first-time warrior on hardcore mining and blacksmithing? Dawson, I think you'll find that people have kind of like different opinions on uh, the best professions. A lot of people think that for most classes, having herbalism and alchemy, the ability to make healing potions and buff potions and stuff is really powerful for any class. And if you're kind of new to hardcore, you, you might want to start with alchemy and herbalism just to give yourself like, especially on the warrior, you don't have a heal button. So being able to make yourself at level healing potions can come in really clutch especially when you're, you're doing a class that doesn't have its own heal button and the warrior also doesn't have any like get out of jail free buttons you got retaliation and, and shield wall if you're wearing a shield but I, I'd go herbalism and alchemy oh yeah Mogra man I couldn't I couldn't do something like that I mean I probably could you know because you can get used to anything I wouldn't want to do anything like that. Yeah, I wouldn't do it by choice. But it's like, if that's what I had to do to get the workout done, <laughs> I would do it. You know, if it's my only option, I'm going to get through it. I'm just not going to be like super happy about it while it's going on, you know. Alex, yeah, blacksmithing is hard, especially without the ability to use the auction house and get other stuff you need and just buy a bunch of, uh, of ore for cheap and smelt it up. I, I regret having blacksmithing to a certain extent, actually to the full extent. And I have contemplated, you know, dropping blacksmithing and grabbing something like either herbalism or skinning that I can just sell the materials and just sell it for gold. Wix, I'm not claustrophobic. It's kind of like, it's a low-key anxiety thing. I, and I'm old enough and experienced enough with it that I can just get through it. It's just not preferred, you know. Once the gym gets so busy, I, I can just opt out of it instead of like forcing myself to go when it's super crowded. But it's not like I couldn't do it. It's totally a preference thing. I don't like lots of crowds. And the more people that are there, the more people might come up to me and try to talk to me while I'm trying to get my workout done, which is not what I'm in for. In Hardcore, can you use the Auction House to buy crafting mats, Taylor? No, in Hardcore right now, the way Hardcore works is uh, you can't use the Auction House. It's solo self-found, so you can't trade with other players or receive mail. And uh, you can't use the Auction House. Solo self-found, so anything you find yourself in the world through gameplay. Or, or that you craft yourself. And we don't know, there's going to be a, a different hardcore servers eventually. Blizzard is going to be opening up uh, a hardcore specific server that will probably have some rules baked into how the server works. We, we just don't know any details about it yet.
Dan, engineering is good for the target dummies. Yeah, someone told me about that. We had engineering on the hunter. I don't think I ever made a target dummy, though. Target dummy is kind of like the Stoneclaw totem, right? It aggros, aggros an enemy and kind of takes hits for you. And the grenades for damage. We did use the TNT and grenades a little bit on the hunter. That was cool. Storm Hunter, hello. Thank you for being here, joining the stream. Hope you're doing well. Costas, I'm pretty sure it's auto renewal if you if it's a sub. A lot of subs they just auto renew unless you go tell them not to. So yeah, if you have a sub in WoW, you're you're gonna keep getting charged unless you use like a game time card or something like that. But if it's like a bank account or credit card that you have on file, they're gonna charge you that every single month on your renew date. And that's going to come out automatically unless you, unless you go put the brakes on it manually by canceling the sub. Because yeah, you, you pick the option to pay a month at a time, right? Uh, but what that does is it's going to charge you every month automatically. And I don't know if Blizzard emails you to like let you know the payment is upcoming. I know Final Fantasy XIV, they always email me and say, hey, two weeks out, your, your payment's due in two weeks. And they're really good about communicating it, but I don't really think that Blizzard does that. Tactical Warrior, we need the Shining Silver Breastplate at, at Blacksmithing 145. Uh, let's see. We're at Blacksmithing 90. So yeah, I mean, getting to Blacksmithing 195 is definitely possible. I think at this point I just have to take like a half hour and do the Blacksmithing. Which we haven't done yet at all. I, I do find production professions kind of tedious. Obviously, watching the bar fill from, from left to right over and over again is not anyone's idea of like super fun gameplay. But yeah, we should we should try to work on it since we do have it. I feel I feel kind of stuck with it at this point. Costas, you want to know if you cancel the sub, do you still get to keep the game content like in like in Star Wars? Um, game content. If you don't have a sub, you're not going to be able to log in and play. So, like, the game is yours if you bought the game. If, if you're talking about, like, retail, you own whatever version that you own. And all the stuff in the game is yours, so you collect stuff in the game, whatever, that's all on your account. But you can't log in unless your sub is active. There's no, like, free-to-play once you're past, like, level 10 or level 20, I think it is. I think level 20 is, like, where you have to have a sub. I'm... Not 100%, but I know for sure if you don't have a sub active, you're not going to be able to get in. Christy, you want me to make a decision for you? Hardcore Priest or Pally, what would I prefer? Um, they both have a lot of survivability, so it's really like personal flavor. I, I like being in melee and having a big two-hander and heavy armor. But we played a, a Priest to level 25 until I got her killed in the elevator shaft in Undercity. And she seemed pretty invincible. We had Power Word Shield and stuff, and I thought, like, how are we ever going to die with Power Word Shield? And it didn't seem like we were going to, and then I got her killed in the elevator. So they're both really good classes. It's really like a question of do you prefer being at ranged, or do you prefer running up and slapping things in the face? Because they can both do really, really well, especially even if you're new at hardcore, they can both do really, really well. A lot of survivability. Christy, yeah, thank you for that clarification. Yeah, so if you cancel your sub like today, but your date is like at the end of the month, then you're gonna have access for the rest of the of the month that you've paid for. So yeah, you can cancel any time within your month, and it just won't charge you again. But you'll get to have whatever game time is left in that in that month period. So yeah, if you don't want it to renew, you could go sign up for a sub, get your sub active, you're active for the month, and then you could immediately cancel that sub, and then you're gonna be active for that month, and then it's not gonna it's not gonna charge again.
All right, I still ended up in an area that I didn't really want to be in. So let's take the northern route here and we'll kind of come at the cemetery from this side. We'll cut through here and we'll approach the southeastern corner where we really want to be. Yeah, Alex, I'm pretty sure there is some kind of trial for, for Dragonflight. I just don't know what level they let you play up until. I thought it was like 20, but these days I feel like maybe it's level 10. But I am I am not 100%. Simon wants to know if we're going to do a dungeon today. Simon, I'm not planning on doing any dungeons on this character, really. The only way I would do a dungeon would be if some of you guys were in the game and you put a group together and you wanted me to tank or heal or DPS. Then I'll run a dungeon. I don't want to run a dungeon with pugs, you know. I, I'd be cool to run dungeons with you guys because then you'd, you'd kind of know what you were getting yourselves into. You'd be able to have watched me play at least a little bit and see, you know, how distracted I am. So you, you guys can put yourselves in that position. I, I really don't want to trust myself to a pug, and I, I don't want to get a pug of, like, random people killed. I'd rather get you guys killed because you would know what you're signing up for, if that makes sense. When Blizz drops their official hardcore servers, we're, we're going to put a guild together, and, and that'll make it easier for those of us who are, who are playing to be able to group together and do dungeons. Oh, Alex, it's no level cap up until the 4th of June. Or do you mean the 4th of July? Or did it just end? Because I think it's it's June 6th, right? Briss, to get the most updated version for retail, you just have to own Dragonflight. So you don't have to go back and buy previous expansions. You just have to own the most current expansion, which right now is Dragonflight. So if you're looking at like what version am I supposed to buy, there really shouldn't be a lot of choice uh, for retail. You should just be purchasing Dragonflight and then you're paying your monthly sub. And then the monthly sub keeps you in Dragonflight but also gives you access to play Classic and Classic Wrath. So you get a lot. You have to pay the monthly sub even with owning the game, but you get a lot for your sub. But yeah, just Dragonflight is what you need. It ended on June 4th. Okay, so, so it's over. It ended on June 4th because why, I wonder? I wonder why not just keep it going through the summer. <laughs> Tactical where you say every every time I say the word pugs you perk up. Your nick your nickname is Pugsley? Okay. Well I wouldn't know that. That's true. Gamon says, once you make enough gold, you can just buy playtime with the WoW token. Yeah, in retail and in Wrath, in Wrath Classic, you can definitely do that. The WoW token is a thing that exists. Mm -hmm. You haven't paid for a sub in five years? Yeah, that's awesome. Yep, that's probably one of the only good things about the WoW token, is that it allows people to pay for game time with their in-game gold. Definitely an option. Louis, for that, I, yeah, I think you have to have a different account that you would have to set up to be a US account. I don't think you could do it 
on the same account, but if you had a different account, you probably could. Now, now keep in mind, if you're in the EU and you're connecting to uh, US servers, you're going to get probably some, some high ping, like 300 ping or more. Miles, you can on the same account. You found out the hard way by accidentally buying a whole year sub for US by Okay, I guess maybe there's an article or something to uh, help with that because my understanding was always that uh, you couldn't do it that way. But yeah, I I'm totally wrong in this case, it seems like. Hmm, and then Alex, you say that you can't get on the US servers even through VPN for EU. I think that no matter what, there might be some challenges to it. And then, like, even if you are able to do it, you might be having uh, an amount of lag that you might not want to tolerate. Which, uh, especially if you're playing hardcore and you have, like, a lot of MS lag, I can see that it could affect gameplay a lot. It would be great if there was a way for people to play from different regions, like, lag-free together. I, I don't know what that technology would be or why it doesn't exist, but... I guess we just need, like, faster connectivity speeds. I don't, I don't really know. Dan, you can get into the US servers on Classic. No complications, no problem. David Poole, you say the speed of light is still a hurdle. Yeah, we haven't quite gotten over that one yet, have we? Once we figure out instantaneous transportation, then we'll be able to connect with each other seamlessly anywhere. Brisk, you want to know if you get Dragonflight, will you be able to get your old account back? My man, that depends on whether or not you know the credentials to log into your old account. Because what you should do is you should go to the World of Warcraft website, you should log into the account that you want to be on, and then you should purchase the game while logged into, into that account. So yeah, you, you want to purchase the game while logged into that account. So you, you'd have to just make sure you know your credentials, get yourself logged in on their website or in Battle.net, and then make sure you purchase the game logged into the account that you want to play on. Because if you just buy the game and go through the process of setting up a new account, then no, that's going to be a new account that's not going to be attached to anything else. Do EU play players pay more than US players? The price is different based on, based on region and type of denomination, I guess. Yeah, it, it varies everywhere you're at. I feel like it's the equivalent everywhere, so like it's a base amount, but then obviously depending on where you're at in the world and, and what currency you're using, the value of your currency is going to be different, so you may have a higher number attached to what you pay, but it, it might be the equivalent of what people are paying elsewhere for their currency value, if that makes any sense. It's not based on regions, so like they used to do a little bit where like if you were in a region of the world that was like considered to be a lower income, they would actually charge less, but I believe that every price now is is off of a base price, probably in USD, since Blizzard is a US company. And then based on your currency value, you're either gonna have a higher number or a lower number 
than the $14.99 a month or whatever. I hope that makes sense. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so my coherency level is probably low today. Nobody got a lot of sleep in the house last night with, uh, with the boy having a high fever all night. But I hope I'm making some kind of sense. Jay Diamond, hello, man. It's going well. It's going well. Thanks for being here. Yeah, Dan, basically Blizzard gets the same amount of money no matter where the money's coming from or what currency it comes in as. It's going to be equal to the 14 USD or for the full price of the game USD, whichever it is. Operation High Jump, you want to know if I heard the alien news? No, I, I don't even watch the human news, man, so I don't know like where in my schedule I would have time to... Is the alien news as depressing as the human nightly news? Because every time I watch Lester's like five minute recap of the news, I'm just like shaking my head and then I turn it off. Typically, I can't subject myself to it. If the alien news is like happier and more exciting, I would certainly watch that. What network do I catch the alien news on? Probably Fox, right? Mm hmm. Operation Hijup says, confirmed, the U.S. has non-human spacecrafts. No, spacecrafts are made out of metal and like alloys and stuff, so it makes sense that the spacecrafts are not human. I don't think that makes them alien, though. Basically, man, I'll believe it when Lester Holt tells me, because I, I think that man's got integrity. Otherwise, I'm not going to buy it, you know? Would I ever go to space if I had the chance? I think that, like, everybody basically would just have to say yes to that. Mm-hmm, yeah. Tactical, they, the spaceships aren't made out of null tents after all. Exactly, yeah, they're made out of metal and alloys and stuff. It'd be weird if they were if they were human spacecraft. In all fairness, you know, if it is ever disclosed, found out, indicated, shown that the, that the U.S. has alien spaceships, like we're gonna hear it in like about it in a bigger way than just like a reddit page or something <laughs> that's all i'm saying I i'm gonna wait for the big reveal you know james you got into retail and you just you just weren't digging it you got back onto hardcore yeah I understand that, man. I've done that a lot of times. I don't, I don't get onto retail anymore as of like two weeks ago. So, you know, I, I've done that though. You get onto retail, you're like, oh, maybe I'll play some retail. And then you're like, no, no, I won't. Especially leveling in retail just isn't, it is not engaging. It is not immersive. It does not feel meaningful or, or very fun. Helicat says, go Chiefs. Yes, indeed. Go Chiefs. Tactical word, the big reveal of the aliens will be a fake attack. Or or a real attack. Or an attack, you know, by, by alien spacecrafts being piloted by human pilots. I don't know. Yeah, the, the big reveal would probably be a little bit uh, a little bit different. I listen, when there's alien spacecrafts, I'm probably not gonna find out uh, from chat. And don't get me wrong, like, I wish that, that there was proof that, that we had alien spaceships. I think that'd be super cool. Like, if Lester got on the air and he's like, tonight we have to show you the alien spaceships that the government has just showed to us in, in our in our one-on-one -on -one interview with the alien spaceships. 
then I'd be like, well, damn, those are some alien spaceships. This just changed everything. It'd be like a bellular thumbnail. This changes everything. But I don't think that's what's happening, right? Miles, thank you, man. This is the highest level hardcore character we have so far. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's super generous of you. And yeah, we're level 27, about to be 28. Yeah, I, I assume that all alien news is fake, and I will continue to assume that, like I said, until I either see one in front of me or until Lester tells me. That's like, that's it. Nothing else is going to convince me. SB, thank you, man. Thank you for being here, hanging out in the stream. I appreciate you. James asked if I feel that endgame content in retail is too complex and overcomplicated. James, I feel like there are too many currencies for me to ever want to care about. And when, when I played the recent patch, I was like, oh, they did good things for gearing, but they also did things to put so many currencies in the game that I just don't give a crap about any of them. I don't want to mentally track them, figure out what they do, how they combine, how many it takes to click to make another thing. They have, current, they have currency bloat, and uh, I wish they would just stop. I think they, they did really good things for gearing. I think if you're engaged in retail and you've been playing retail since like BFA and you just have, and you're used to it. You're used to all the vendors and all the currencies and all the bullshit. And if you haven't been playing retail religiously since BFA or Legion, then you try to play the game and it's like indecipherable garbage. It's like you need a dragon scale crest to click five and make another thing and you can swap those for different stuff and somewhere you use that to upgrade something. It's like, I, I can't even be bothered to care about that. Yeah, I do feel like, and I don't know if complicated is the right term, just stupidly stacked on top of itself. Just too many currencies, which isn't necessarily complex, but it's just a lot of just currency and crap. James, Legion was like the tipping point because Legion was when they added the infinite AP grind and that's where like the whole idea of renown tracks and stuff eventually evolved from. And yeah, Legion was when I basically realized I wasn't going to be able to keep playing retail when like a couple of people in my guild were just farming their AP nonstop and I realized I was never going to want to do that in my life. I realized that it was that retail and WoW were maybe coming to a close for me and I got, I got really lucky that they then decided to release Classic because if not for Classic, I would not be playing World of Warcraft today at all, not in any capacity. An old history book. We have we have a full inventory, or we oh we already have the item. Although the cover of this book is marred by scratches and caked with mud, the words "The History of Stormwind" can still be read along its spine. Upon opening the book, the seal of the Stormwind Library is cl clearly stamped on the first page. It looks like someone checked this book out and never returned it. Our quest log is full. How wonderful! We'll hang on to that one until we're in Stormwind next. Yeah, but Dan, there will always be classic era for you to play in. So like you don't have to you don't have to be done. You yeah, but moving on to Cataclysm for some people that's not an option. I totally understand that. I, I don't want to play Cataclysm really either. If it comes out I will to see those those zones again, the high level zones, just to see them again. But I, I don't think I'm gonna I'm not gonna approach the end game. I don't know, I just don't think I'll care. Yeah, James, Shadowlands had problems. Shadowlands had a lot of problems. And the problems, like, the problems really started in BFA. And uh, I think everyone can agree that Shadowlands was just kind of a flop. Michael wants to know, do we play Classic Era Endgame? Michael, no, because right now we're doing the Hardcore Challenge. We, we've been doing that for a while. I'm not a huge Endgame player. I don't like just repeating content endlessly to get the best gear that's never really bend my modus operandi. When I'm in a guild of people and I'm having fun with them, then I don't mind doing endgame stuff all the time. But only for like the fun of the activity and the people that I'm playing with. I, I don't care about 
if I'm on my own and I'm solo playing, I'm not going to grind the end game at all. It's not enjoyable to me. Miles, you still have a nightmares about Torghast. Torghast was a feature that I was super excited about when they like explained how it was going to work. And uh, Torghast was something I hardly ever did any of. I don't even think I can- I did not even complete like the necessary story elements, I don't think. To like rescue everybody from Torghast. Yeah, I uh... I bounced off Shadowlands super hard, super fast. Marlena asks, when they do Kata, is it even classic anymore? I think that's a lot of the question that people try to grapple with, is like, for some of us it's not. For a lot of us it's not classic anymore. And I think people's reasoning is that once you change the old world, you can never get to this old world again. That's no longer classic. And I think Blizzard has to know that to some extent. So I, I think we will see Cataclysm, but maybe we'll see Cataclysm under a different name or a different guise. And maybe, they'll, maybe they will do it in such a way that we can keep Wrath and still have... Uh, and still have Kata, but let me ask you this. What's the point of having Wrath of the Lich King servers forever? There's not going to be any more content. There's not going to be a hardcore journey. So what's the point? If they're not going to keep Wrath and do like Classic Plus and Wrath, then who cares? How much of the same content are you going to do? You know, Are you going to play Wrath of the Lich King for 5, 6, 7, 10 years? Some people might. I don't think that applies to most people though. And I'm sure they felt the same way about when they decided not to keep any Burning Crusade servers open. They, they probably used the same reasoning. Like, who's going to keep playing this long into the future? Is it worth it? And they decided that it wasn't. James, I feel the same way about Dragonflight, man. And, like, you don't have to keep going back. And that's what I realized is, like, a lot of people who play a game, especially if you're, like, a mono gamer and you've played that one game for, like, 5, 10, 20 years you get attached to it in like a weird way and it's like you almost feel like you're doing something wrong when you're not playing it you feel like like you said like i haven't tried hard enough to like it i, I haven't given it a chance i need to give it an, and like you feel that commitment to it when ultimately man it's supposed to be something that's there for you to have fun with so definitely if you're logging into any game no matter how long you've played it and you're not having fun just log out yeah, don't feel bad about it. And don't feel like you have to keep going back and giving it chances. Just log out, play something else, because there's lots of great games out there. And uh, you, you are not indebted or obligated to try to like World of Warcraft. Because World of Warcraft today is not what it was. It won't ever be again. And I think that's fine. It doesn't have to be. And we, we change too. And I, but I think it's really hard when you play a game for so long. You, you want to play it. You know, you tell yourself, I want to love this. I used to love this. Why can't I love this? And it's like, you just have to accept maybe that it's not for you. And that's kind of the point I got to after trying to go back over and over and over again <laughs> and bouncing off it every time is I finally told myself, like, look, Robert, you're not having fun. And no amount of trying is going to make the fun just magically start happening. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel that same way. And I think it's okay just to not log in. Vassy, yeah, yeah, you could take a break, you know, you don't have to, it's not like a, it's not like a, uh, forever thing, you don't have to, like, either play WoW always, or never play WoW, that's like, that's not what it is, you, people take years off, you know, take years off, hey, maybe when 11.0 comes out, maybe 11.0, they'll do a big world revamp, maybe they'll change some gaming philosophies, and maybe that'll pull you back in, that's kind of the great thing about it, is like, the game is going to grow and change too, so if you're not liking it in this expansion, well, that's fine. You know, check it out next expansion, but never feel obligated to keep giving it chances. You've been playing Bloodborne? See, there you go. And I think a lot of people have like an archive of like older games that they think, oh, I'd love to have time to play that. So, well, you, you can have time to play it, you just have to stop trying to play the game that you've been trying to play. If, if you're totally, if you're not digging it, and it's not making you happy when you log in, then you just don't log in.
Yeah, classic hardcore is the best for like just immersion and really getting into your character and caring about the character. We're looking for skeletal fiends. Skeletal fiends. Everything matters so much more in classic. I think that's a lot of what draws people to it and gets them sucked into it, is how much every little thing can matter. And and especially when you're playing hardcore, when if you go down, that's it for the run. I, I liked endgame content when I had a great group of, of friends to play with, you know, when I was playing with a guild, we were having fun, because then it was like an activity. You know, it's like go, going bowling, going out to play darts or something. Uh, and, I, and I really enjoyed those times, but I've never enjoyed doing raids, just pugging it on my own. It's always been about just having that group activity to hang out with cool people and, and play the game we enjoy. Paul, yeah, retail does just, it's just a race to get the level. It's not like a race, but it's like the leveling is just like what stands between you and all the endgame stuff, because the endgame stuff is where they make the content, right? They don't make new leveling content now, they don't, they don't do that, so like really, the leveling is just to get you to their, to their instance content. Rams or I am married, yep. And I have an eight-year-old son. Blood Moon, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Steven, you think what really helps in hardcore is that it feels like a fresh server because people die and they try again. Yes, that that does help with like feeling you're you're playing in a big game with other people who are loving what they're doing too. And there's always people around, so the world never feels empty or abandoned or anything. Because yeah, people die and then they re-roll, and it's like every time I've started a new character, the starting zones have been busier and busier and busier. Every time we die and come back. There's more people at those low levels trying the challenge, and that's really awesome and heartening to see. Ramsar, I, I appreciate that. Is it amazing that I'm married and have a kid because I get to also do this? Is that the amazing part? Because lots of people are married and have kids. By my age, I'm, I'm going to be 40 this year, so... I'm really lucky to have the partner that I have. Because she lets, lets me live my life like I'm a 12-year-old, so... In that, I'm incredibly lucky. Yeah, That part's really amazing. Yeah, Steve, man, I, I think a lot of people have, like, that memory of the golden time for them in World of Warcraft. For me, it was Wrath of the Lich King originally, uh, playing with the Guild of People that we were in then. And I think we all have that time, and sometimes that's what makes it hard to enjoy the game today, is you, if you're always looking back at those times, like, that's your golden time, and, like, nothing's ever going to be like that again. It sometimes makes it hard to, like, enjoy things the same way, yeah. Because you have that, that comparison of that time that seems so fun. And I feel like that's okay, you know. You can't you can't get the past back, but you can make new memories and have new fun in the future. It's just maybe you don't want to do that in like the same game, you know. But yeah, I feel that same way about my old guild. I think you know I'm probably never gonna have that uh, same vibe again. But like then I think, well, you won't, but you'll have a different vibe somewhere else if you choose to have a guild. It'll be a different experience. But yeah, it will never be the same. That's absolutely true.
Yeah, Miles, nostalgia is bittersweet. And the thing is, nostalgia can sometimes hold you back from, like, enjoying the right now and, like, living in the right now. If you spend a lot of time, like, nostalgia is useful up until a point and then it kind of becomes a hole that you can fall down. David, that sounds amazing. That sounds like a solid group. Kiopi asked if I've ever considered creating a guild. I'm gonna have I'm gonna create a guild when they do the official hardcore servers uh, this this summer. Whenever that happens, we're gonna put a guild together then. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna run it, but it, it will be the guild that we <laughs> that we hang out in, that we group up in, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. We're probably going to call it Rambling Ramblers, or the Rambling Ramblers. I, I don't want a name that has, like, implies ownership. <laughs> I don't want, like, Robert's Ramblers or anything like that. I, I think the Rambling Ramblers would be a decent guild name for us to have. It's amazing, Ramsey, it's amazing that I can still do this and be a father and a husband. I don't know, yeah, it's, it's amazing that I'm this lucky, I don't know really what the implication is, but yeah, it's, it's a really good time. I'm exceptionally lucky to be able to live how I do. But you know, luck is only one part of the equation. You have to put effort in. You have to try every day. You have to develop routines and good behavior. You have to be communicative and like express what you want and acknowledge what you want to yourself and then you have to like take action and work towards it. So it's it's not all about luck, but you know, some of it is. Johnny Hoover, yeah, it, it revitalized Classic for me too, because I was getting really bored with Wrath of the Lich King, and I think that was becoming kind of obvious in some of the playthroughs that we were doing, and finding Hardcore was like the right thing at the right time. Ava Lee, welcome. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you coming and hanging out in the stream. Thank you so much. Kiopi, thank you. Thank you for the membership and welcome. Yeah, I appreciate that. But now you're stuck here, so. Yep, now we can't let you leave. Sorry. feel like there's just been a deficit of fiends, although maybe I'm just not trying hard enough to specifically tag them.
I feel like if anybody if anybody did step away from hardcore to play Diablo for a bit, I feel like most of those people are back. It's it's been super busy. And for it to be this busy at level 20, 27 is uh, kind of something because I guess the average the average level of a ha hardcore character gets to about 14, we found out. And uh, that's the average level of when most people get killed is around level 14. So seeing this many people in Duskwood is really cool. Kiopi, that's awesome. I'm happy to have you here. Ramzor, thank you, man. Welcome. Thank you for the membership. You're also now just trapped, so... This is the path you chose for yourself. Don't ever forget that. We appreciate having you here. The fiends are noob killers. I mean, <laughs> so many things in hardcore could be a noob killer, to be fair. I mean, I've died in an elevator shaft. So there's that. The biggest killer is like anything with a fireball, and I'm learning anything with shadow bolts. Shadow bolts might hit harder than fireballs. It, it's kind of hard to decide. But yeah, basically I'm terrified of anything that casts. If it casts magic, I don't like it. Yeah, Ramzor, I appreciate that. I appreciate you getting your WoW fix here, because there's lots of places you can get your WoW fix, and that you choose to do it here really means a lot to me. Dan, yeah, we're getting, like, hyper respawns, like, of the same guy in the same place over and over, which is kind of okay. They're not, like, they don't get hyper aggressive really fast. They just kind of hang out for a second, so we're a little bit lucky with that. But yeah, the respawn rate is really, really cranking today. See this guy here who just popped back into the world? We'll pull him back here a little bit so we don't have to contend with multiples. And I could be using Exorcism because... Oh, he resisted. Oh, good. Well, that works. Matt, was it the Alliance Druid Bear Quest? Was it the Owlkin, the level 13 and 14 Owlkin that got you? Man, those Druid Quests, man, they're like, Hey, you want your bear from at level 10? Go do this quest. And you get there and it's like, okay... I'm level 10, I don't have bear form, all I can do is wrath, and now I have to fight level 13 mobs. Totally, totally messed up. It was the horde side. Yeah, you have to go and like, something summons, right? You summon something at you, and then you fight it. And I feel like that was also like, some kind of higher level owlkin thing, right? Yeah, it's like, those quests are almost designed to get you killed. Because they tell you you can do it at level 10, but you can't. And if you've never done it before, like, you don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that if you've never played that quest before. Alex, you got it at 11? Yeah, I can't remember how we handled it. I feel like we waited till 11 too on our, on our druid. Although I will say that, like, the horde one is hard because you don't see it coming. But, like, the alliance one, you have to go back into a cave. And there are, like, level 13 owlkin everywhere. They're super aggressive. They path around, like, mad. And either one of them, it's like, either one of those quests can get you killed, like, so easily. And the, the druid's tough because, like, the druid is so tedious that you get bear form, so you struggle through the ten levels, right? You struggle and you struggle. You finally get there just to get killed by an overlevel owlkin. It's pretty rude. Yeah. All you can do is go again. J time, yeah, I'm alive before 7 p.m. in the UK. You know, I've been trying to do like the, a midday stream, like an afternoon stream, at least for a little bit each day. Although I have been getting on in the evenings to play Diablo. I, I don't know like how much more Diablo I'm gonna play. Part of me wants to finish the main story campaign. Part of me doesn't really care because it, it's the story is a little bit weird and it hasn't really grabbed me yet. So I, I was kind of thinking about other stuff we might do in the evenings a few times a week. I don't think I'm going to do an evening stream every day. I think I'm going to do like three times a week. I might get on in the evenings to play something.
But yeah, I've been trying to- my point was I've been trying to stream at like different times throughout the day a little bit so that people have a chance to... to come and hang out if they want, to, depending on what time zone they're in. And I still need to get some world clocks because I, in my head I, I never really know what time it is in like different places. But if I had a couple world clocks on the wall in front of me, I think, I think that'd be super cool. Alex, you got a fortitude buff from a level 50 priest? Yeah, I'm assuming you're substantially lower level, so... <laughs> those buffs can be good when you get that higher level buff. It's super powerful. We are done with the, uh, with the fiends. I don't know if I want to go after the ghoul things, but maybe we could. I feel like we're going to get another ghoul quest if we go turn this one that we just did. Which we won't do by hearthing. Uh, I feel like we're going to get another... Another ghoul quest. Let's let's try to go turn these in. Before we do anything else. Nerdstrong, the new ESO chapter is really good. I feel like with that game, like all the writing and all the story is like basically always going to be top notch. You, you can really tell that they have like professional fantasy writers that know what they're doing. Unlike other game companies we could talk about <laughs> who don't know what a write, they don't value a writer enough to hire a team of good writers. Mm hmm. J time you ask if I game standing up. No, I don't. I wish I, I wish I had I have a back on the chair too. It's just like it's a low backed chair, you know. And uh, I just try to have good posture because if I don't have good posture, my back is going to hurt. Cuz I am I'm a tall fella. And and I do things like deadlifting and stuff that, you know, at my age if I'm not careful, I could hurt my back. Yeah. I've I've been asked that many times if I'm standing up because I think I appear to be very straight backed and I, and I am but it's through conscious effort and practicing posture that I'm doing that right now because the alternative is that I slouch or adopt a sloppy posture and then I will physically pay for that later Stitches, yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're, we're next to this hunter. He's gonna outrun us, though. Uh, is he gonna outrun us? Yeah, 30%. We have the 8% from our talent, but he, he's at 30%. Yeah, we do have to be careful. I should probably get off the road. Yeah, let's, uh... Let's, let's get off the road a little bit. I would much rather fight some wolves than have a Stitches encounter. We could probably survive a Stitches encounter with a bubble and our, and our run speed is actually really fast right now, so... We could probably live. I, I don't think we need to test it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we need to test it, so we will, we will stay off the road here. See, this is why I need to be streaming this, because you guys remind me of stuff like this, and I would have just ran on the road unless I saw him. But what would have happened is he probably would have like spawned behind me and murdered me from behind, right? Yeah, Ghost, you mean to say stay off the road. Yeah, we don't want to be on the road. Stitches patrols up and down the road and he's a big elite. He's gonna he's gonna come smack us. By the divines. I actually now that I look at the sentence even I see. I see what you did. In this case, it's the worst advice you can give somebody though. <laughs> Forest Buckler. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. Yep, let's do that. 
And so when we're running away from something like really punishing, people have told me, hey, you should have a shield to uh, give you some extra armor and survivability. So here we go, we have a shield. I can, I can click between these and just when we're running away, I'll try to click the shield and maybe that'll help us. Sorry about that, guys. We have a plumber coming out to the house uh, because we have some issues that need to be taken care of really quick. So I might have to pop off in a little while. We will see. We'll go for a little bit more. But yeah, that was just my wife telling me that the uh, she tried to let me know the plumber was coming. But uh, yeah, I didn't see her message. So on the road again. On the road again. You just can't wait till I'm on the road again, can you? On the road. Good book. Jack Kerouac. If you haven't read On the Road, you should. You just shouldn't be on the road. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry, a little bit of distraction. We, ha we have a, a sick kid, and then we have uh, a little plumbing issue that needs to be taken care of, so. If I, if I have to pop off suddenly, it will be because the plumber has arrived and my Texas Blue Healer is going berserk, and I, I'm gonna need to like step away and help with that, so. What I'll probably do is I'll just go, we'll stream until that happens, and then possibly I'll get back on later. If not, maybe we jump on this evening and we do some more. Vitaly, hello. Welcome to the stream. I don't know how much longer we're going today. I have a couple things going on. One of them is going to be a plumber showing up in my place soon to uh, do some work for us. But I'm going to keep going until until it's time for that. Depending on how the dog reacts, I might be able to stream through it, but knowing my blue healer, I'm gonna have to take him for a walk and like play with him out in the yard while the guy's here doing his thing. That's kind of what I think is gonna happen. Uh, Taxi Arcus, you wanna know if I use a VPN? I, I don't use a VPN in my personal life, no. Can I help you? Safety of Darkshire is in your hands. I don't have enough watchers to keep the town safe. We need you to dispatch for to Ravenhill yet again and rid the Eastern Mausoleum of 20... The Mausoleum, they want us to go underground, don't they? See you around. I think we can get some of them on the surface. Dan, set the Hearthstone. Yes, yes, absolutely. Brisk, how are my professions doing? They're, they're going, you know, they're not going great. But they're going. For me, they're doing okay. I, I I do need to take time. I have a bunch of mats in the uh, in our bags and in the auction house for blacksmithing, and I need to take some time to to do that stuff and like get some stuff crafted, level up our blacksmithing. But I just haven't done it yet. Have a good Zombie one. juice goes to Amber Crombie. The plumber is actually stitches. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna come eat me. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a lot we can do in the area, but maybe... Did I set the Hearthstone? I don't think I did. I think it was the thing where I said, oh yeah, set the Hearthstone, and my brain said, oh, you did that, but in reality, we never did it. Well met. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't ever do it. There we go. Grind it out. Yeah, grinding it out is not a bad idea, Tactical Warrior. Maybe we can grind it out and just, like, find somewhere safe to fight. There might be some stuff down at the cemetery here we could fight pretty safely. Emperor Logan, hello. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. My favorite starting zone in Classic would probably be either Mulgor on the Horde side or Elwyn Forest on the Alliance side. Mm -hmm. Least favorite starting zones, Duratar uh, and the Night Elf starting area, Teldrassil. Those are my least favorite.
JJ, you ask if those are my favorite because of nostalgia or because I like the zone. I think it's I, it's it's a little bit of A and a little bit of B. Yeah, I definitely have nostalgia for both of those zones, but they're both really beautiful zones that I just love playing in. So I think it is is a little bit of both. Mulgore was the first zone that I ever ran a character around in. The first character that I ever created in WoW was a Torin Druid that I got to run around Mulgore on a friend's PC to try the game out. So definitely some nostalgia there. But it's just a really beautiful zone. I like the flow of the quest. I like the ambience of Duskwood. After a while it gets a little dark for me and I, I like a little change of pace and you know it's good to be able to hop between like different zones to kind of like get a refresh every once in a while so one aesthetic doesn't doesn't nag on you too much. It's kind of the great thing about WoW is like whenever you're sick of the look of one area you have other areas that are equivalent that you can go to. You don't have to stare at the same stuff uh, for too long if you don't want to. Marsh Danny, hey, it's going well. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming and being part of the stream. I'm really enjoying the Pally class. Yeah, it's it's really survivable. It, it's keeping us alive as I learn how to stream. So right now, it, it's it's my favorite. Red Robin, yeah, Lock Madan, Lock Madan, another beautiful zone. Mm -hmm. I feel like one area that I've been slacking off a lot has actually been mining. I don't feel like I've been paying enough attention to mining nodes, but maybe that's just me. I feel like we haven't been Maybe there's not a lot of mining nodes in Duskwood, and maybe that's why it feels that way. But it feels more likely that I am just not being observant enough. I hope I haven't missed too much tin. Wolfix, you ask, is this your first character in Hardcore, or have you died before? I have gotten every single class killed at least once. This is the second Paladin we're on, so... This is also level 27, is the highest level we have gotten to in Hardcore. So yeah, second time on the Pally, we, we've killed every class. Usually they die in the 20s. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of experience getting characters killed. Let's say that. But I did find out yesterday that on average people die when they're around level 14 or 15. That's like the average level. Confo95, hey man. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. 
scrap. But yeah, we're we're at the record. We're at uh, we're at our highest level. So every every level after this is just going to be a new record. Yeah. Dan, no, I didn't. I haven't picked up any more add-ons. I'm like so add-on adverse. <laughs> Tactical Warrior, you can't avoid mentioning something by talking about how you avoided mentioning something. That's you mentioning it. Confo, I am good, my man. Good luck on the exams. Yeah. My quest is done. Yeah, Wilder, I'm just grinding. Yeah, we were probably collecting something too off of these guys' scalable fingers, but I'm just grinding right now. We're trying to grind out uh, level 28 before the plumber comes. I have a plumber on his way to my house. So when the plumber gets here, my dog is going to explode. And I'm probably going to have to jump off and, and go take care of him and take him outside and stuff while the plumber does his work. So yeah, right, right now we're just grinding. Trying to see if I have the time to get level uh, 28 here. And then probably be back on later. I can't 100% guarantee that with my kid being sick like he is, but I am going to try to get back on at some point today, even if it's in the evening for some more classic. No Diablo 4 today. So if we do get back on later, it'll be for hardcore. David Poole, you thought the, the plumber was a wandering elite. Yeah, no, that's Stitches. The plumber is going to is gonna snake the line that leads from my house out to the road so that every time we drain a bath or flush a toilet, the drain in the, in the, in the utility room doesn't bubble up. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to snake the pipes. What, whatever plumber vernacular they use to describe it. Auntie, what's for dinner? Too early to think about dinner, my friend. Yeah, I probably don't know that yet. I, I, and I skipped lunch, I think, so... You allowed. Thank you, man. Thanks for the membership. Thanks for joining. Now you're stuck here. I appreciate you. seen a lot of crits a lot of crits against these low level guys i guess that's the good thing about fighting low levels is that you're just going to crit more inventory full oh we did not we did not need that slowdown and these guys are not given a lot of xp so grinding out this one bubble it could it could take more time than we thought it would but we're definitely going to go back and sell we, we don't need to be out here with full bags when we're like a stone's throw from the town that would just be silly SB, you feel like the paladin is basically like my spirit animal? Yeah. I agree with that, and I, I do like paladins. I, I like the holy magic. I like the ability to have a sword and shield, even though we're not doing sword and shield for this run. And I, I basically love anything that can fight in melee. So, yeah, the paladin is, uh, is really great. 
my main in retail was a paladin, you know, from Wrath of the Lich King on, basically, with with the exception of like trying a hunter and a couple other things here and there. I've I've mainly been on a paladin a lot. So, and in hardcore, it's definitely the class for me because people agree that it's oh, there's stitches. <laughs> people agree that it's basically like hardcore on easy mode. So yeah, definitely the class for me. We can get like a thumbnail here; would be cool. There we go. That'll scare people. And yeah, uh, we could probably vendor maybe safely. I think we could vendor safely. Like when you're someone like me, like you need a lot of get out of jail free buttons because uh, Good day to you. I can be inattentive even at the best of times and like learning how to stream and chatting with you guys while staying alive. It's been a challenge and without the paladin we'd be dead. So yeah. Uh, stamina, that's that's an upgrade. Five stamina over two stamina. Uh, we're, we're keeping the shield. Safe travels. All right, they they did kill him, so we're good. Yeah, I think, I think part of the event, I think every once in a while he runs into town, or maybe it's a trigger when somebody completes a quest. I forget what, what makes him run into town and fight the guards like that. I think it Hello. might happen at the end of a quest chain or something, but I'm not 100% sure on what causes him to do that. I just know that sometimes he will be fighting in the town and you just, like, stay away. <laughs> Would it be griefing to be on the horde side and be healing stitches? When he's fighting the when he's fighting the NPCs, I don't think so. It would be it would be a low key way to try to grief, and it would probably have like mixed success because people would be able to see him fighting the NPCs and they'd see that he was getting healed. They'd be able to run away. So I don't know if it'd be griefing. It might be just like a waste of a griefer's time though. That'd be cool to see him waste their time. After completing the hermit quest, it spawns him to run into town. And yeah, it could anybody heal him? Is he is he considered like an opposite faction? And there's my dog. All right, guys, I am gonna stop here for now. I'm gonna try to be on later. I appreciate you guys being here for the stream, and for your patience and understanding as I have to get off here really suddenly. So I am gonna park it at the inn, and I will see you guys later. Thanks for being here. Take care of yourselves out there, and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again soon. Bye for now.